Hi guys. Okay, so in this video, we are going to understand electronegativity, bond polarity, and net polarity of the molecules. The application of this knowledge lies in understanding the solubility of compounds. There is a concept, like dissolves like, which means that the polar molecules are going to dissolve in polar solvents and non-polar molecules are going to dissolve in non-polar solvents. So how do we determine whether a molecule is polar or a molecule is non-polar? Let's find out. Okay, so here you see on the screen is the electronegativity chart. The same electronegativity chart is also in the handout which I give to the students in my class. So we are going to use it as a reference. So before we get into the details of the numbers on the electronegativity chart, let's uh, understand what is electronegativity. Electronegativity is basically electron affinity, which means love for electrons. So certain atoms have have a stronger attraction for the electrons. And those atoms are all, you know, non-metals. So many of these non-metals that you see are on the upper right-hand side corner of the periodic table. And then there's hydrogen, which is also a non-metal. And out of that, the fluorine is going to have the maximum attraction for the electrons. So it's going to pull the electrons with the greatest force. So Linus Pauling, had come up with this scale from zero to four. Zero is the least attraction for it, for for electrons, uh, the least love for electrons, or will no no pull for the electrons. But four is the highest pull or the greatest strength with which these electrons are going to be pulled. So we see that fluorine, the number four on the screen, is the number four. You see this number right here is the fluorine with its highest electronegativity, 4.0. And then the others are relative. Now, we also see that there's a trend in the periodic table. When you move in the same period from left to right, you see that the there is an increase in the electronegativity. So which means that the the, the carbon and nitrogen, carbon is less electronegative in comparison to nitrogen. And nitrogen is less electronegative in comparison to oxygen. And similarly, there is a decrease in the electronegativity when you move down the column. So if you look at it on the right hand side, on the left hand side, this arrow is pointing downwards, which means there is a decrease. And if you look at it, the cesium has the least electronegativity on this chart here, which is 0 0.7. Okay, so that is how you read the chart. And uh, uh, they get the numbers on the, uh, you know, the, the, the pull for the electrons. Next thing that you need to understand is the table 6.14, which is on page eight again on the handout and in general. So this table shows the differences in the electronegativity, the type of bonds that relate to it. Sorry about that. Okay, so we see the type of bonds that relate to the difference in electronegativity are three types. One is the nonpolar, the other is polar, and the third is ionic. So nonpolar, the range in the difference in electronegativity is from zero to 0.4. The polar is from zero to, from 0.4 to 1.8, and from 1.8 to 3.3 .3 is the um, ionic bonds. Okay, so what are the polar, nonpolar, and the ionic bonds? Non-polar bonds are formed when there is equal sharing of electrons. And we are talking about the covalent bonds here. So non-polar covalent bonds are formed when the electrons are equally shared. The polar bonds, covalent bonds are formed when the electrons are unequally shared. And the ionic bonds are formed by the transfer of electrons. And in this case, we see the ions, the um, cation and the anion formation. So these are like highly polar bonds. Now let us look at some of the examples. Okay, so now you're going to look at the, the table and you are going to tell me what is the electronegativity of carbon and the electronegativity of oxygen. So this is, we are trying to determine what kind of bond is it? Is it a polar bond or is it a non-polar bond? So first of all, we write down the electronegativity of oxygen. Oxygen is more polar and the electronegativity of carbon. So oxygen is 3.5 and carbon is 
2.5. So 3.5 minus 2.5 gives you 1.0. So this difference in electronegativity relates to what side in this um, uh, on this table, it is, you know, where the polar covalent bond is. So this is going to be a polar covalent bond. Now, this is a polar, so I'm just going to write on polar. Now, there's a, another very interesting point here. This means, now I'm going to put this here. Here is carbon, here is oxygen, and this is the bond between the two, and it's just a single bond right now for this, for the sake of, you know, examples, but I know carbon will have more and oxygen would, you know, prefer to have two. So anyway, so what does this mean? This means that oxygen is pulling the electron clouds towards itself. So here you see is the, this is going to be a very hot region. And so if this region is very hot, that means that oxygen is pulling the electron clouds and the electrons are spending less time with carbon. And so here, the electron density, the density of finding, or the probability of finding the electrons is lesser. You know, it's not that they are not going to exist, they will be there, but it will be, they will spend less time. So now what does this mean? A slight, because there's more electrons are towards oxygen. So here, oxygen will have a slight delta negative sign and carbon will form a delta positive sign. So this means that oxygen is pulling the electron clouds towards itself. So this side is the, the side towards the oxygen side is the polarity, okay, in this bond. So we are just focusing only on the individual bonds, okay? So this is a polar bond. Now let's look at the carbon and hydrogen bond. So once again, let's look at the electronegativity of carbon and the electronegativity of hydrogen. So carbon and hydrogen. Carbon is 2.5 from the table and which table are we referring to? We are looking at this table and we're going to look at the electronegativity values of that are written at the, at the bottom, that number. Okay, so that, that's where I'm getting this. Okay, so here we go. Hydrogen is 2.1. So we have this on the borderline 0.4, right? And so it's right there at the border. 0.4, you look at it, 0.4. So it can be non-polar and can be polar. So it's right there, but we still consider it to be non-polar, okay? So it is more towards the non-polar side. Okay, so just this, that's the way it is. So here we have carbon and we have hydrogen. So it is non-polar, which means there is equal sharing of the electrons. So we're going to just put it like um, equal sharing of the electrons and uh, let's just do it with this color. So this is equally shared. So this is how this is going to form. And there's going to be no, um, no charges in this case. So we see that this side is the same as this side. So the electrons are equally share, being shared, okay? And it's like kind of non-polar no polarity, no dipole, dipole. So this is basically a situation where a dipole is formed. This is called a dipole. Dipole means where like two poles are there. One is a positive and the other is negative. Okay, let's look at now another example of carbon and chlorine. So what kind of bond is that? So here we have, again, the electronegativity of chlorine, more electronegative, that goes on the top, electronegativity of carbon bottom. So chlorine is, 3.0. Once again, where, where did I get this number? This is again coming from this chart, 3.0. Okay, so 3.0 and carbon is 2.5. So this is 3.0 and you're basically subtracting. I'm sorry, I should have put this here. So just subtraction, the difference means subtraction anyways. So, okay. So 3.0 minus 2.5 is 0 0.5. So now this is towards the polar side. So if you look at this table and the similar table is again, once again, in your handout, okay? Sorry, this is a handout for your class, for my classes here. And so in this handout, we see that the same number, the 0.5 is towards the polar side. So it is unequal sharing of the electrons. So how do we show this? So here, this is the chlorine, 
uh, sorry, this is carbon and this is chlorine. So chlorine is more electronegative. So this means that chlorine is going to be uh, attracting the, you know, the, the, the electrons are, chlorine is going to be attracting the electrons towards itself. So more electrons are going to be spending time towards the chlorine side, right? And this is the this is the hot region. You know, these are what I'm drawing here on this thing is the is a, is, is these are called the heat maps. Okay. So heat maps are, you know, like it's they've measured the temperature. Okay. So the side where there are more electrons, that side is yes, it is red hot, and it will be show it as a delta negative. Delta. This is the sign. Let me put this here. Um, delta this means delta this means slight charge like a small charge it is not a full-fledged charge as you would see with the transfer of electrons but this negative sign means that uh, delta delta negative means that it's it's not complete separation of the electrons but yes the density or or the the concentration of the electrons is more towards you know this this particular atom okay so carbon will have um less density of the shared electron cloud, okay? So that is what it is. And chlorine is more electronegative. So the, when, we, when, we, when we put the, the, the arrow, this means that the polarity is more towards the chlorine side. So it is a polar bond. Let's look at the bond of nitrogen and hydrogen. What's the story with that one? So here the nitrogen has the electronegativity of 3.0 and hydrogen has the electronegativity of 2.1 and again this information you are going to get from the that chart so 3.0 minus 2.1 is 0 0.9 and once again if you look in this between 0 0.4 and 1.8 is the polar polar side okay and here once again if you look at um I'll just put it here hydrogen and sorry, I'm going to use in green color. Um, this is the hydrogen, nitrogen. And here we see that the this side is the colder side. The hydrogen side is the colder side. The blue color shows the cool, cool region, right? Cool region in space. And this is the hotter side. The nitrogen side is the hotter side. And that side will have a higher temperature. Okay, because electrons are spending, there's more activity of electrons this side. And again, these are all shared. So it's not like separate, like clouds. No, it's shared. So we see nitrogen being more electronegative, pulls the electron clouds towards itself, develops a slight delta negative sign. Negative sign, delta negative is the Delta negative means like uh, the the slight negative charge, and hydrogen is delta positive means slight positive charge. But the electrons are skewed more towards nitrogen, so that is why you know we draw the arrow that way. Now next is so this is definitely a polar bond. Let's look at the oxygen and hydrogen. What's the deal with that one? So here the electronegativity of oxygen is um, three point five. And hydrogen is, hydrogen is, hydrogen is um, 2.1. So you subtract the two, you get five minus one is four and uh, three minus two is one. So one point, that's very, very highly electronegative. Like the difference in electronegativity is 1.4. So it's like huge, it's a very polar bond. So the more the difference in electronegativity, the more polar the bond is, okay? So here we see that um, your hydrogen, oh, sorry, hydrogen is here, oxygen is here. Oxygen is very polar, uh, sorry, oxygen is very electronegative. So it is pulling the electron clouds towards itself and hydrogen is, deficit of electrons. So in other words, hydrogen is such a baby molecule that, you know, I mean, oxygen is huge in front of that. So it's, it plays that, you know, it will pull that one electron that that's hydrogen is sharing uh, also. So, I mean, it, these two electrons that the hydrogen is sharing, I mean, are also, you know, kind of like skewed like not that they don't leave, but that cloud, it's in the end, it's all electron cloud. So like, uh, you know, if you've seen these, uh, you know, uh, these sugar candies, 
right? Those sugar candies or soft sugar candies, you can mold them, you can create all these different shapes. So same thing, you know, those, um, those puffs, the sugar candy puffs, you know, or, or, so those things. So here, here is the hydrogen, hydrogen with its, so these are again, these are the heat maps, okay? So we see now that um, hydrogen will have a delta positive charge slight positive charge oxygen but because it's highly electronegative pulls the electron clouds towards itself and this polarity is shown by the arrow pointing towards oxygen and the you know this is so this is a very polar molecule highly polar so uh, i mean a polar bond okay so this is how you show individual bonds very clear so polar we talked about we talked about one non-polar example and now let's look at the, the concept of net polarity. Net polarity is, you know, like these are individual bonds we, we discussed here. But if you, and I'm going to just put it here, these are the heat, heat maps. Heat maps means the red color shows less electrons or low temperature and the uh this one high temperature more electrons okay so this is more more uh or you can say electron rich electron rich and this is electron deficit so Okay, less electrons here. So that is why delta positive and delta negative. All right, so this is just, just a general trend. Now let's look at the concept of net polarity where you combine the, um, the, the uh, where, you, where you combine the strength with which each of the electrons uh, uh, are being pulled by a particular atom like on all these sides and then you combine them and you you see that whether if that pull is being cancelled out or not if the pull is cancelled out from all the sides equal pull from all directions non-polar molecule but if the pull is unequal one side is pulling more and the other side is being pulled less then it's polar so look at these examples now one example is a hydrogen. Okay, so first is, let's look at the case of a hydrogen molecule. So what is happening here? So we have here hydrogen and the other is also hydrogen, okay? And so what is back to square? Same thing, electronegativity of hydrogen and this is the other electronegativity of the other hydrogen. So the electronegativity of one hydrogen is 2.1, 2.1, and the other one is also 2.1. So the difference, the delta En, or the difference in electronegativity, you subtract it, it becomes zero. So right here, back to this table, you see the zero stands for nonpolar covalent. So overall, this molecule will be nonpolar, nonpolar molecule. So this is just, you know, one single bond so you know it applies to the whole thing and then this molecule will be just you know overall non-polar so non-polar have are kind of like less temperature you know the it's it's like equal distribution of the electron clouds okay so this is one thing now let's look at another example of chlorine okay fine here is your chlorine chlorine by default is highly electronegative but here is one chlorine connected to another chlorine and electronegativity of chlorine electronegativity of chlorine is going to be the same here uh, chlorine is 3.0 and 3.0 so when they minus each other it becomes zero and so again, this molecule now is the non-polar molecule, although chlorine is very highly electronegative atom, but when it connects to itself, overall, you know, the overall, so this molecule will be again, a non-polar molecule. 
So here is a nonpolar molecule, okay? Now comes another molecule, which is another example here, and that is the um, HCl. Okay, let's look at this one, HCl, okay, HCl, or hydrogen chloride for gas, but hydrochloric acid for, you know, if it's in the aqueous medium. So, so now we are going to look at, this is the simple Lewis structure. So it's very important also to um, understand the, you know, how to draw the Lewis structures. So here we have the electronegativity of hydrogen and, and it's, uh, hydrogen is lower. So electronegativity of chlorine minus the electronegativity of hydrogen. Okay, so chlorine is, 3.0 and hydrogen is 2.1. And so this is 0 0.9, okay? So now we see that chlorine is, because it is more electronegative, it will have a delta negative charge. Hydrogen will have a delta positive charge. And chlorine is, uh, because it's more electronegative, it will pull the electron clouds towards itself. Okay, so we will see one side is hotter. So this is a heat map again. One side is hotter and the other side is cooler. This is cooler, this is cold. Okay, so this side is cold and one side is hot. That means the overall net polarity is towards the chlorine side. Therefore, yes, individual bond, because it's just a you know diatomic molecule made up of two different atoms, but it is, it is the overall, this is one molecule, okay? So here in this molecule, we will see that this is a polar molecule overall, okay? Overall polar molecule, okay? All right, now we are going to look at the, um, let me just post it here. This is the delta En. Delta En is the difference in electronegativity. Okay, now we are going to look at our next molecule, which is a little bit more complex. It's the carbon tetrachloride. Now let's look at this one, very interesting molecule. Okay, so here is your carbon and it is connected to four chlorines. And so one of the things when you are uh, doing these, uh, you know, polar and nonpolar bonds and polar and nonpolar molecules, it's very important that you know how to draw the Lewis structure. And if your Lewis structure is not correct, the whole thing is messed up. So very important. What is the Lewis structure? First of all, the Lewis structure of this one, carbon can make four bonds. Chlorine makes only one bond. So carbon gets to be in the middle. Okay. And then the chlorines, each of the chlorines go on the side. And yes, this is going to be a tetrahedral arrangement. So always make sure that you are um, you know, putting it in, in that form. Okay, so here are the three, here are the, here, this is the Lewis structure, okay? And yes, these are the electrons here. Right here, okay? Now, we are going to now focus on individual bonds. So there are four carbon chlorine bonds, okay? So let's count the electronegativity of one and then it will apply to all of them. So I'm gonna just need more space here. So here is the electronegativity of chlorine and then the electronegativity of carbon, okay? The electronegativity of chlorine, chlorine is 3.0 and carbon is uh, 2.5. Okay, so 3.0 minus 2.5, the difference in electronegativity is, um, is 0 0.5. And according to that table, which we showed here earlier, the same table, the difference in electronegativity 0.5 means that this is a polar covalent bond. So every single bond you see here, in this case is going to be polar covalent, which means that every chlorine is going to have a delta negative charge because chlorine is more electronegative. So it will pull the shared electrons between carbon and chlorine towards itself. And carbon will have a slight delta positive charge. This is one thing. Now, 
now I'm not going to draw the heat maps right now, but here's the thing, this chlorine is pulling the electrons towards itself. Here, this chlorine is also pulling the electrons, the shared electrons with carbon and chlorine. This chlorine is also pulling with the same force and this chlorine, this side is also pulling with the same force. So, because it's the chlorines on all the four sides and all of them, the difference in the electronegativity is 0.5. So that is the same 0.5 on all the four right? So even though it's very important to understand that even though individual bonds are polar, individual bonds are polar, the overall, overall, the molecule is, the molecule is nonpolar. Why? Because the polarities, the overall, the net polarity is zero. So when we say net polarity is zero, that means the, you know, it's canceling. So net polarity is zero. So the CCL, the four carbon and chlorine bonds, they, they cancel each other out because the pull is in all in four different directions. Okay. So four, you know, CCL bonds, the pull, you know, the, 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 like the bond, the polarity of each bond is canceled by the other. Okay, so in other words, there are four CCL bonds and that means that the polarity of each bond, each CCL bond of each, that is the C, CL bond is canceled by the other C, CL bond, okay? So that pull is canceled or nullified. That is why the overall, this molecule becomes nonpolar, okay? So that is the story with with carbon tetrachloride. Okay, now what is the difference between polar and nonpolar? Just to kind of get it, nonpolar is like oil, like grease, like butter, you know? So that kind of feel, you know, is there. And polar on the other hand is like more like sharp or stinging or it kind of feel, the kind of feel that you get like with water, like that kind. You know, so that's, there's a difference the, about the field. That's how you can get, get a picture of, you know, it. Okay, now the last example is, no, there are two more. One is the ammonia and the other is the water. Okay, so four, five. Now let's look at the situation with ammonia. So NH3, NH3 is, this is the structure and this is the hydrogens. This is the Lewis structure. Now here, very important. These guys you see on top, this one, these are actually electrons and these are two electrons and these are called lone pairs, lone pairs and commonly known pairs, but sometimes these are also called non-bonded electrons. Okay, so these are non-bonded electrons and they don't like nitrogen and hydrogen bonds. So they push them, they push them away. Okay. So this is the reason why they take the topmost part and then these three hydrogens are at the bottom. Okay. So that's the shape. Fine. Now one rule of the thumb, any time on the central atom, you have only one lone pair, you know, it's the electrons are the whole driving force of polarity is the electron. Which side are the electrons more towards the nitrogen side, obviously, nitrogen and hydrogen, because the bottom one, even though each of these bonds are, these three nitrogen, hydrogen bonds are polar. Let us see, nitrogen, let's look at the electronegativity of nitrogen. Here is the electronegativity of nitrogen and the electronegativity of hydrogen. So nitrogen is um, 3.0 and hydrogen is 2.1. And so this becomes 0 0.9.
And so even though each of the bottom ones are polar, the nitrogen hydrogen bonds are polar, right? But these guys on top, you see, these ones are free electrons. Okay, these are like free and they're non bonded. They're just sitting there creating more like negative charge towards one end in the molecule. So that is why overall polarity is going to be towards the nitrogen side. And yeah, the nitrogen hydrogen individual bonds are polar bonds, but these bonds are are going to like cancel each other's pull. So, you know, nitrogen is still pulling the electron clouds towards itself. So each of the hydrogen by default is, you know, less like it's less electronegative. So it will have a Delta positive charge. Okay. And the hydro nitrogen will have a Delta negative charge. So what does the heat map look like of this molecule? So this is how it is. So here is your nitrogen. Let's just draw it here. Here is the nitrogen and these are the hydrogens like a pyramid shape, okay? And here's these electrons on the top. So what do we see now? Because nitrogen is more, uh, more electronegative. So yeah, it is pulling, sorry, let me just do another color, this color. Okay, here, more electronegative. So, mm, okay, more electronegative. So here is this, nitrogen will be more hotter, hot side. This is the heat map. So this is the hot side. And this side of the molecule will be cooler, the, the lower side where the hydrogens are. So this is cold, cold end. This is cold end. This is cold and this is cold. Okay, so we will see that, you know, that the bonds don't break though. Bonds will remain where they are, but it's just the presence of this extra two electrons drives the overall polarity towards nitrogen. So the net polarity is towards nitrogen side, okay? So this is one. And the last one is where <laughs> this one was still okay. This one was still like more like, uh, uh, like somewhat symmetrical, but see this one. Here is your water. So what is the... Lewis structure of water. Lewis structure of water looks like this. Okay, Lewis structure of water looks like this. So this is what you have. All right, now oxygen, very polar bond. Remember, we already calculated that. So oxygen, electronegativity of oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen is 3.5 and hydrogen is uh, 2.1. So this becomes 1.4, so very high electro, uh, like a very highly polar bond. So here, because of that, oxygen will acquire a delta negative charge and hydrogen will have a delta positive charge. And here's this delta positive charge. So where is the overall polarity? The overall polarity is going to be towards the oxygen side. Yes, even though this is, this is a polar bond, polar bond, and this also is a polar bond, right? But the oxygen, because it has a very high electronegativity, it pulls that shared electrons between oxygen and hydrogens. So this is the situation. This is how the heat map looks like. So here is your oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen, and anytime you have the lone pairs, although this is like lone pairs, like two of them, but we see that this and this. So here is the hydrogen, low electronegativity and you know, the, the, the delta positive side, very little, you know, electrons spread time here, but the electrons cloud is pulled by oxygen. So the temperature is very high towards the oxygen side and low or cooler, or you can also say that it's cooler and is towards the hydrogen side. So this is how it looks. And so actually this is more, let me just push this a little bit here. 
this is still connected. It's not like it's separate because it's shared. You know, the electron clouds are shared. So anyway, so we see that the overall polarity is more towards oxygen side. Okay, so this is a very polar molecule, very polar molecule. Okay, highly polar molecule. So that's the overall molecule. And so here we talked about that individual bonds, but and this is a polar, overall, a polar molecule. Okay, ammonia. And did I write this one? Non-polar molecule. Polar molecule, non-polar molecule. Okay, so this... Um, is how you determine the net polarity in molecules. And the it's very important, like I said, first understand the Lewis structure, you know, if for a molecule, and then look at the individual bonds and the polarity of the individual bonds and how they, if they cancel out, if the pull is the same on both the sides. I have to do one more example, actually. I should show this one where it's like really canceling. Let's just do this. Sorry about that. Okay, I should have made this. Okay, here is carbon dioxide. Now here's what's happening. Yeah, this is very interesting. So just hang on for a minute here. So here is your carbon. Here is this oxygen. This is another oxygen. And these are the double bonds. This is another double bond. This is the lone pair. And this is the lone pair, right? And now let's look at the electronegativity of electronegativity of carbon and the electronegativity of oxygen. And we see that oxygen is 3.5 and carbon is 2.5, sorry. Carbon is 2.5. So 3.5 minus 2.5 is 1.0, okay? And so that is a polar bond. So yes, this is a polar bond. And this one also is a polar bond. So each individual bonds are polar, which means that oxygen will have a delta negative charge. This oxygen will also have a delta negative charge and carbon acquires a delta positive charge. This is all okay, right? Individual two, two polar bonds. But what is happening is that because Oxygen and oxygen, the pull is the same. Oxygen, because it's electronegative, it will pull the electron clouds towards itself, right? And so that is what makes it polar. So let's do this. Here is your carbon. Here's one oxygen. This is another oxygen. And yes, this is a double bond. And yes, this is, these are the lone pairs. And now let's look at the situation here. Um, this oxygen is hotter, so this is the hot side in this molecule because oxygen is pulling the shared electron clouds, right? And here is another oxygen pulling the shared electron clouds right here. And this one also is pulling. So one side is hot, the other side is also hot and the same temperature, that's the thing because it's oxygen on both the sides. So the pull is the same and fine, the middle, the center part is cooler, which is okay, you know, the center part is cooler. But since the oxygen is the same on both the sides, then both of them are going to be pulling with the same force, okay? Same force. Now you have to imagine this, a tug of war. So here you have one heavyweight champion and you have another heavyweight champion and both of them are like pulling a rope. So this guy is pulling and this guy is also pulling and both of them are pulling a rope with the same, let's bring the rope here, are pulling with the same force, okay? So here's this rope that is being pulled. This is the rope that this guy is pulling and this guy is pulling. And both of them are pulling the rope with the same force. So this tug of war is happening. Who's going to win? Who will win? Nobody, because this or these are the same, this is pulling with the same strength. Both of them are pulling with the exact same strength. And if they have the same, same pulling, you know, have the same like strength, same power or the horsepower or whatever that, and then these guys are going to, in the end, either break the rope, uh, the rope or the match, either the rope is going to break or the match is going to end in a tie. Either way, you know, 
two possibility or the rope breaks okay or the rope you know the match ends in tie so that's you know you see that so nobody is winning here so when that happens the it, although we may see the the, the, the region is this, this side is yes delta negative but this side is also delta negative with the same you know magnitude and carbon will have a delta positive side so overall net polarity in this molecule cancels out one side and the other side the pull is the same zeros out so therefore this is a non polar molecule non polar molecule Okay, so the molecule is nonpolar means that nobody wins. In polarity, one person is winning. You know, it's all like love for electrons in the end, electronegativity. So, but if, if it cancels out, then no one wins. So, okay, so this, uh, I hope, was easy and interesting. And um, thank you for watching. <laughs>